Hello, I'm Buck Surdu. I'm the author of Combat Patrol World War II. In my previous video, I described the unique mechanics associated with using cards rather than charts and dice to resolve combat actions during the game. At that time, I really glossed over the notions of how units activate, promising for there to be a second video that would describe the double random activation scheme. So this is that video. The double random activation scheme, uh, not surprisingly, takes its name from the fact that there are two sources of randomization in the activation mechanism. The first source is that each unit uh, rolls a six-sided die at the beginning of each turn. So it's important that that's done at the beginning of each turn. You don't roll it once for the entire game. And that's used to help with the sequencing of units during the turn. That's accomplished through a second source of randomization, which is the activation deck. Now this activation deck is numbered one through six. There are black cards and red cards. And uh, the difference between black cards and red cards uh, will probably be described in a future video. But the... Uh, once the, everybody rolls their six-sided dice across the table, we begin drawing cards out of this activation deck. And every unit on the table that has the number drawn, so in this case I would draw a six, every unit on the table whose command die was a six would get to activate. Now if it turns out that two units opposing each other uh, would want to activate at the same time, there's a mechanism by which you determine which unit goes first. Uh, but generally what that means is that all of the units with sixes around the table or most of the units with sixes around the table are doing things simultaneously. The purpose of that is to avoid the notion that, you know, eight people are sitting around the table watching one person do stuff. So I'm going to demonstrate how that works through a series uh, of activations, really just one turn. The other point I want to make is typically I use dice for, for the command dice that are pretty unobtrusive, right? These darker dice you don't really see when they're on the table. But for this demonstration I'm using big bright white dice to make it easier for you to see them and see what numbers they are. So here's the general situation I'll use to describe the double random activation scheme through one turn of combat patrol. The forces involved are uh, a platoon consisting of just two squads of Germans, versus a platoon consisting of just two squads of Americans. You can see here I have an American squad, here's part of it, there's the rifle team, the BAR team, and over here you can see the reconnaissance team. This is the platoon leader back here. Over here we have another US squad, again divided into three teams. The Germans have a squad here in the hedges. This squad is a rifle, composed of a rifle team, and there's a machine gun team. And behind the house here, we have another German team and uh, a German team back there. And here's the German platoon leader. Uh, again, you can see for purposes of the game, I've put out these big bright white dice so that you can see them during the demonstration. But you'll notice next to this squad here, I put the darker ones that I typically use. And when you use ones like that, that makes the table pretty clean. So to begin this, the uh, demonstration, uh, we're going to assume that the players on both sides have already rolled their six-sided dice, their command dice for the turn, and you can see them placed on the table. So now that every player has rolled the six-sided command dice for all of their units, the game master or designated player would then shuffle the activation deck, and we begin the turn by beginning to draw cards. So the first card is a one. Now looking around the table, we have this team within this squad has a one. Uh, that team there has a six. Oops, lost the roof. Uh, that's really the only one on the table. Now, so the player who owns this squad really doesn't want uh, this rifle team to move before his reconnaissance team. So what he's allowed to do is swap these dice. So he swaps the three with the one, right? and he orders then this reconnaissance team. To move forward. Now again, uh, the purpose of this particular demonstration is not to talk about the mechanics of movement and firing, so I'm going to gloss over all of that. But suffice to say that this team would move up here onto this hill, 
as a result of drawing cards for movement distances and those kinds of things. That's the only one on the table, so now once that one is done, uh, we're going to draw the next card. So now that the one has completed his activation, we're going to flip a card and see who's next. So the next card drawn is a four. Now there are a lot of fours around the table. The BAR team in this squad, that team up there in that German squad, this rifle team here, and a rifle team back here. So uh, the German uh, platoon leader there, he said he can swap dice with anybody within his platoon. So what he says is, you know what, I really don't want this rifle team to activate now because they don't have any targets. So what he does is he swaps the four with the two, uh, so basically delaying these guys until later, and he passes with his four. Now this team, this team, and that team are going to move. So we've completed the activations for the four. This BAR team has moved up along the back side of the hill. This German team with the machine gun in it has moved up onto this hill to attempt to establish a position up here. The German platoon leader has passed, and this American team that was behind the building has moved inside. So now that we've completed the fours, we draw a card. Before I do that though, let me point out again that that four, this four, and this four uh, all did their action simultaneously because they, they weren't interfering with each other. Nobody could see each other, nobody could shoot at each other, and so those players all got to act at the same time without waiting and watching one, one person. Alright, so now we're ready to draw the next card. The next card is a five. So where do we have some five? So here's a five here with this BAR team. Um, and that German team back there is a six, so this is the only team that can activate, and what this uh, player decides to do is move this team up the stairs into the second floor of the building. So, uh, again, I'm glossing over this for this turn, but uh, that's a regular unit, and they only get to move four inches, so essentially they're just going to get to the top of the stairs. They're actually not going to get to into the building. The next card drawn from the activation deck is a six. There are two teams on the table who have sixes for their command dice. This be, uh, reconnaissance team here in the orchard, and recall that the unit, the German unit behind that building out there is a, uh, is a six as well. Now, they can't see each other, they can't interfere with each other, so the German player and the U.S. player can act at the same time. The U.S. player is going to move his reconnaissance team up to the edge of the orchard where he can see and perhaps call artillery on the Germans behind the hedges. And the German team behind that building is going to move, move with a couple of people and also shoot at the recon team up on the hill that the Americans moved up early in the turn. So you can see where this recon team that was back there has moved up to the edge of the woods. This German team that was behind the building fired with two soldiers and moved the other ones to get online uh, with their six. And the results they got were two stuns. I put these little markers on them on the recon team that was up on this hill. So that completes the sixes and we're going to draw the next card. The next card drawn from the activation deck is a two. The only team on the table is this German team here. Recall earlier in the turn, he actually started with a 4 for his command die, and the platoon leader had a 2, but the platoon leader could swap those dice. And the reason he could swap those dice was because neither the 2 nor the 4 had already been drawn previously in the turn. It really paid off for him to delay these folks, because now, uh, when they activate on a 2, uh, notice that they have a target now. Right? It did what the platoon leader hoped, which was by the time they did activate later in the turn, they would have a target. So with the two, the player decides that this rifle team, five rifles, is going to engage this recon team here in the woods with fire. When the firing is complete, note that one soldier has been incapacitated, which is why I knocked him down, and the other soldier is wounded and stunned with a bunch of morale checks. The next card drawn from the activation deck is a one. The only team on the table with a 1 is this team here. Now remember that they actually activated early in the turn uh, when, the, when the black one was drawn. But there are two cards uh, of, with each number in the deck. There's a black one and a red one. Now 
Uh, this team, both of his men are stunned. The only thing that he's allowed to do with a stunned figure is unstun them. So that actually completes his turn. Not very exciting, uh, but, but uh, that's all he's allowed to do. The next card drawn from the activation deck is a four again. That's the second four for this turn. Recall that there are a bunch of fours on the table. There's a fire team here inside the building that moved in on a four. There's this BAR team that moved on a four. There's this uh, the platoon leader now. He's got a four because he swapped with this team up here. And there's the German machine gun team. Now, this German platoon leader would love to be able to swap dice so that this team could fire again. But he's already swapped once, and both the two and the four have already come up. Uh, so if either the two or the four has come up, he cannot swap again. In this case, they both have. So while the platoon there would love to let this team fire again and finish off that reconnaissance team, it's not allowed. So this machine gun team is going to move up to the edge of the hill. That BAR team is going to move up on the hill and establish a position. And this team here inside the building is going to move through the building and into the courtyard to take up a defensive position at the gateway. The next card drawn from the activation deck is a three. There are two teams on the table with threes, plus this American platoon leader. He also has a three. Now, he might want to swap with some of his people, but at this point, everybody has already gone in the turn except for that team there, which has a three anyway. Now, this three, this American team, could potentially fire on that German team out there, or that German team could fire on the Americans here. Uh, so since the American team and the German team could interfere with each other during the turn, we're going to flip a card. Each player will flip a card from their ac action deck and consult the 10-sided die icon. So the American player flips the card, looks at the 10-sided die, it's a 9. The German player flips a card and looks at the 10-sided die, it's a 7. So the American player gets to go first. So at the end of the activation, you can see that this American team has moved up a little bit, and across the table, the German team has jumped over the hedge and is moving their way across the road to try to get into the woods. The next card drawn from the activation deck is the Elite card. Now what that means is any Elite units who have the number drawn on the previous card, in this case a 3, get to act again. Now for purposes of this demonstration, we're going to say that the Americans are uh, paratroopers, their guts rating are uh, elite instead of regular, and so now that team with the three over there that moved uh, on the last three, they get to act again. So what they'll do is they'll flip a card uh, for a movement distance, and here the elite unit gets a nine, and they'll move up through the field another nine inches. So the elite American team has moved their additional nine inches because that was the movement that they drew. And the German team over there, note that they didn't act again. They're not an elite unit. Their guts is not elite. So they didn't get to act a second time while the elite unit did. So this mechanism with these elite cards in the deck is a way to, on average, uh, ensure that elite units get a few more activations during a game than uh, regular or green units. The next card drawn from the activation deck is a two. Recall that the only two on the table is this German rifle team over here. They elect to fire. Uh, it, they have a number of targets. They could fire at the Americans hiding behind the wall or perhaps fire at these uh, Americans, the, what's left of the recon team here in the woods. They elect to try to finish off this recon team. So when we resolve the actions for this German team, they're actually successful at incapacitating the last man in that recon team, so we can remove everything from the table. The good news for the American player is he doesn't have to make those morale checks anymore. The next card drawn from the activation deck is a green card. Now what green means is that I'm going to draw the next card, and I'm going to look at the command dice. And all the units whose command dice match this next card get to go, except green units. All right, so I'm going to flip this card and it's a three. So, so the three has come up and it applies to everybody except units that whose guts ratings are green. Now we've already established that this American team over here is elite. They're not green so they're going to get to activate. For purposes of this demonstration uh, we're going to say that that German team over there 
was green, uh, and therefore that three over there where that unit tried to cross the road, they do not get to activate, but this three over here, uh, that's elite, they're not green, they do get to activate. Now, the next card drawn from the activation deck is the re-roll and reshuffle card. Now, what happens in that case is everybody's going to reshuffle their uh, action decks. The game master or the designated player will reshuffle the activation deck. And all of the units across the table, the players are going to re-roll those six-sided dice. Now, you'll notice that in this case, wow, you know, this team, uh, everybody rolled a one. But you'll also notice that, you know, they had a different number in the previous turn. So from turn to turn, these numbers can be quite different. Uh, there's another one, wow. Uh, three. The German platoon leader also gets a one. Uh, that team gets a two. This German team over here, uh, he gets a five. Keep coming around the table. This BAR team, he gets a one. The platoon leader has a three. And this team in the courtyard, uh, they have a five. So in this particular, in this upcoming turn, ones and fives are pretty common. And so you'll be doing a lot of flipping cards from the uh, action deck to determine who gets to go first. Now, when you draw that, that's not that, you know, who gets to go first is not for the entire turn. It's for that particular card draw. So I hope that makes clear how the double random activation mechanism is used within Combat Patrol World War II to provide that unpredictable sequencing of actions through two sources of randomization, the command dice and the activation deck, uh, where you get uh, that, that unpredictability, but with swapping dice, the leaders have a little bit of an ability to control the sequencing of their turns, but that's hard in the course of a of a game. Uh, and it's meant to be hard, right? It's meant to, to challenge the players to have to respond to uh, situations they didn't expect or when their plans begin to go awry. Now there's a couple of enhancements to the system that are covered in the advanced rules to include uh, removing the joker, uh, there's uh, some tokens that you can use to sort of buy cards forward into the deck. All of that is explained in the advanced rules that are part of the PDF download uh, from uh, drive-through cards.